you getting so much from God this morning? So much from God this week? How do you know that God has more for us? Let me ask you, do you want more from God? Come on. We're going to test you this morning to find out whether you do. And I...
listen, so, so I know it's frozen, but just, now we're helping you out. We know which way our left and right is, but we're going this way for you, okay? <laughs> to help you know which way to go, all right? All right, so, so let's try it again, so we can get more here. Where'd he go? Here we go. But they don't know you like me 
joining us online. We are so glad that you are here and know that there is no distance in the spirit. If you couldn't make it here today, that's okay because God is going to touch you right where you are at. I believe it with all my heart. So you just hook right up with us. Amen. Amen. Well, I really think the devil did not want us to meet today because <laughs> not only is it kind of a little crazy outside, but I'm getting ready for this morning, just preparing, and I get a text from our uh, facilities director here at maintenance, and he said, well, um, the boiler went down in the main church auditorium, so we have not had heat all night long. <laughs> they just got it fixed at about 8.30, so he said it's a little chilly, but that's okay, because we're going to bring the fire of the Holy Ghost, amen? We're going to warm this thing right up. All right. Well, y'all, my heart has just been stirred up to pray. And, um, you know, just the beginning of this year, um, I just started getting really stirred up to pray. And so I pulled out uh, my favorite book that my grandfather wrote. Um, surprisingly, my favorite book he wrote is not The Authority of the Believer, although that's a good one. Believer's Authority is a good one. But this is my favorite book that he wrote, The Art of Prayer. If you don't have this or you haven't read it in a long time, get it out because it is amazing. Amen. And so um, the Lord just really for the last couple of years has been stirring up my heart for prayer. And, you know, I've always loved to watch people pray. I know it's kind of weird, but like when people pray, like if I'm ever listening to a podcast, you know, most people, when it gets to the end and a person like prays to like wrap up the service, most people turn it off. I turn it up because I love to hear people pray. I don't know why, I just always have. Um, grew up as a little girl on the road 
I had a very not normal childhood. Um, <laughs> I grew up uh, traveling on the road with my grandfather, and I was in services twice a day. And in the morning time on his crusades, he would, he would teach on prayer, and then he would pray. And I remember as a little girl just waiting for that part and being so fascinated. Oftentimes he would kneel down and he would pray and I would just listen to him intently, listen to him speaking in the Holy Spirit, listen to him talking to God. And I learned so much. You know, I never will forget, I was in the fourth grade and I so wanted to be filled with the Spirit and speak in other tongues. I just wanted it so bad and so... I asked my parents and they prayed with me and they said, now go in your bedroom and just, you know, whatever you hear, you know, just say it, the Holy Spirit speaking through you. So I was so excited and I went in my bedroom and I'm waiting and I'm waiting. And the only word I could hear was aloha. <laughs> and that's, I knew that wasn't tongues because we had just been to Hawaii, okay? And I was like, ah, oh. and I was so frustrated. And I remember I went to them and I was like, all I hear is aloha. And so they said, well, you know, just go back, just, you know, wait a little bit more. And so I was waiting and I couldn't get anything. And I was, I was just devastated. I was just crying and crying. And so, um, you know, about six months passed and I was actually spending the night with one of my friends and she said, Denise, do you pray, pray in the Holy Ghost? I said, well, I want to really bad, but all I keep getting is aloha. And so she said, oh, it's really easy. And my little fourth grade friend helped me to pray in the Holy Spirit. Amen. And you know what? I have such a passion for getting people filled with the Holy Ghost and speaking in other tongues because I wanted it so bad and I know other people want it bad. And it's the easiest thing for me. I love to do it kids, teenagers, adults, it doesn't matter. It's one of my favorite things to this day. And the reason why is because there is so much power in being able to pray in the Holy Spirit. Now, praying in the understanding is good, and we need to do that as well and not get lazy with that and just sharing with God our heart and our, our innermost thoughts. But there's so much power in praying in the Holy Ghost. And so, you know, there's a lot of power in corporate prayer. You know, many of you will remember this. How many of you remember coming to the prayer seminars that Brother Hagen had um, in RMA, which used to be RCA, it was the only auditorium we had. And this was in the 80s. And remember, we had these maps on the wall, right? And Brother Hagen would have us stretch out our hand. And then we got these like fancy like vinyl maps. They were like super cool. And we would stretch out our hands. And I remember he, for like years, years, he would have us stretch out our hands toward the Soviet Union. How many of you were ever in a service? And we would pray for that iron curtain to come down, right? And I mean, it wasn't just you know, one time, one and done type thing. No, this was like day after day, year after year. How many of y'all remember that? I know several of y'all. You know, it was persistence in prayer. I think sometimes we've forgotten that. We want to pray one time and expect God just to part waters, you know. But there's something about being persistent in our prayers. Because sometimes things have to be fought in the spiritual realms, right? in order to see results on this earth. And I remember being a teenager and you know, stretching my hand out towards the Soviet Union. We pray and pray and pray year after year after year. I finally remember I was about 15 years old and you know, Brother Hagen had to stand up and stretch out our hands. And I thought, oh God, do we have to pray for the Soviet Union again? I literally told God, can these people get their act together and can you answer this prayer and bring this curtain down? Cause I don't wanna pray about this anymore. You know, and you know, it, it came down right in the early nineties. So praise the Lord, corporate prayer. There's a power in that. Amen. I want to look at a few scriptures about that, about corporate prayer, because my heart has been stirred up. So we're going to go to Acts first. We're going to look at several scriptures and then we're going to pray because I am stirred up to pray. Amen. All right. So let's look at a few scriptures here. 
Um, over in Acts 1, we'll just start in verse 12, just for a little reference. It says, Then the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the Mount of Olives, a distance half a mile. When they arrived, they went to the upstairs room of the house where they were staying. Here are the names of those who are present. Peter, John, James, Andrew, Philip, Thomas, Bartholomew, Matthew, James, Simon, and Judas. They all met together and were constantly united in prayer. All right. It goes on um, to say during this time, there was about 120 believers together in one place. They had that corporate prayer, right? Let's look over in Acts 2, verses 1 through 4. We know it well, right? On the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. Suddenly, there was a sound from heaven like a roaring of a mighty windstorm, and it filled the house where they were sitting. Then what looked like flames of tongues of fire appeared and settled on each one of them. And everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. But they were all together in one place, right? Let's look one more place. Acts 4:31. Let's go over there. I'm going to read, I'm going to King James this one. I was reading the NLT before. It says, and when they had prayed, they, the place was shaken where they were assembled together. All right, so Acts, this is the early church, right? Notice, I mean, here just in the first few chapters, it talks about they were all together in one place, united in prayer right? They were constantly united together in one accord in unity, praying. And what happened? The Holy Spirit came down and shook that place. You know, one of the results of corporate prayer is that the Holy Spirit shows up. You know, when we are praying out those mysteries and and those things and we are unified together in one accord, Man, it allows the Holy Spirit just to explode and do things that he wants to do in us and through us and in the world. Amen? There's an importance of corporate prayer. And my heart has been so stirred because I feel like we've kind of gotten away from that corporate prayer. And here at Rama, starting in 21, we started having corporate prayer. Just the importance of coming together, united in one place. Do not think it is an accident that the devil is trying to get us not to meet in one place. Because there is power in that corporate prayer when we come together in one place and in unity. Do you not think that the devil's going to fight as hard as he can? Because he knows tremendous power is available through the Holy Ghost when we gather together and corporately pray for things. Amen? Let's look in Ephesians. Uh, my mom has been been going here. I just love it when the Holy Spirit does that, this, you know, I didn't know what she was going to talk about. She didn't know what I was going to talk about because you don't tell other ministers what you're going to talk about because they will steal your message. Okay. (laughs) And then you got to come up with something new. So anyways, but I love how the Holy Spirit works together. So Ephesians four verses three and four, make every effort to keep yourselves united in the spirit, binding yourselves together with peace. For there is one body and one spirit, just as you have been called to one glorious hope for the future. Notice it says, make every effort, make every effort to keep yourselves united. See, you know, it's not easy to keep ourselves united, to keep coming together. Lots of distractions out there. But there's something about coming together in unity and we need to make that effort, right? Now, another thing that comes from corporate prayer is not only does the Holy Spirit show up, but we get boldness, boldness. Let's go back over there to Acts 4, 31 in the King James Version. Pull it up here. I want to 
is, I want to look at a different part of it. It says, and when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and they spake the word of God with boldness. So the results of corporate prayer are the Holy Spirit is definitely going to show up. Amen. And you're going to get boldness to speak the word, to speak the word. And don't you think that we need boldness in today's times, right? We need boldness in these last days because I truly believe with all my heart. And I know they've been saying this since I was a little girl, but I really believe right now we are living in the last days. Okay, we really are and we need boldness and that's why it's important to come together corporately and pray because it infuses us with boldness. There's, there's power that we get from being with one another. There's a boldness that takes hold. And you're not just doing it alone and you can walk out into your world and speak with boldness about the things of the Lord by the power of the Holy Spirit, because you know you're not alone, right? You know that you're corporately together. So we've got boldness, right? When we come together corporately. That's just a little lesson that I wanna tell you about corporate prayer, okay? It brings about the Holy Spirit and boldness. But why am I telling you this? This is the part that I really wanna to get to, and, and then we're gonna pray. Now, um, I know many of you here, you've come home, you're alumni, you're graduates, all right? And so, you know, one of the questions that I get from a lot of graduates, well, hey, what's going on at Rama? What's Rama doing? What's, go what's it like now? Well, I'm gonna tell you what it's like now, all right? It is on fire, all right? It is on fire. And the same Holy Spirit that was flowing at Ramah when each of you graduated is the same Holy Spirit that's still flowing through. And man, we are getting things done in the spiritual realms. We are learning, we are growing, and we are getting things done. Amen. So if you want to know, it hasn't changed at all. But let me tell you about something called Revive. All right. You, yeah, I know my revived people. I love y'all. Um, oh, uh, hey, where's my revived people? A lot of you students are sitting up there. Some down here. Okay, listen to me. Listen to me. When it's time to pray, don't you dare sit in your seats. You get down here. You get down here with me. We're united. We've been on a journey. I need you down here. All right. All right. Okay. Word to a wise should be sufficient. All right. So you say, what is revive? Well, how many of you older alumni remember prayer school? Okay, well, prayer school is now revive, all right? We're reviving it, we're praying for revival. And it looks a little different. Actually, we've made it much more convenient. We have it now on Wednesdays from 11.30 to 12.30, just right after school. So it's really convenient for the students to come before they go to work. And let me tell you, man, since the beginning of this year, the Lord just dropped it in my heart. Oh, and. Either me or Mrs. Hagen, we are the ones who lead Revive. We're there every week just praying it out with the students. Amen. And so, you know, ever since the beginning of the year, the Holy Spirit just dropped this in my heart that we need to start going deeper in prayer. And th th these are the words that he gave me and praying out Holy Spirit strategy. Holy Spirit strategy. Because in these end times, in these crazy times that we're living in right now, it is going to take Holy Spirit strategy to navigate. And I have been brought back to the importance of being led by the Spirit of God and listening because it is gonna be so important in these end times that we are so in tune with the Holy Spirit that lives big on the inside of us. I say that every single day. I say it every single day for all of my family members. I say, thank you, Lord, that the Holy Spirit lives big on the inside of me, leading me and guiding me and showing me things to come. Because in these end times, we need to know those things to come. So we need to know if we need to go to the left or if we need to go to the right. That's why I love that song that we sing. Man, if the Holy Spirit's going to the left, I'm going to the left. If it's going to the right, then we're going to the right. But I'm going deep. 
We're jumping in. Amen. It's going to take that in these end times. Holy Spirit strategy. Turn over to John chapter 16. I can't even speak without going over to John chapters 14, 15, or 16. Talking about the Holy Ghost. And if you haven't read them, you need to read them on a consistent basis. All right. John chapter 16. Verse 13, I'm reading it in the NLT. When the spirit of truth, uh, Jesus is talking about the Holy Spirit. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own, but will tell you what he has heard. He will tell you about the future. I want Holy Spirit strategy in my life. I want Holy Spirit strategy for Rama. Amen. I mean, this works on the personal side. You know what? You business people out there, man, you can be the most successful business person ever because you've got the Holy Spirit living on the inside of you and he can give you Holy Spirit strategy. You have an edge. You have an advantage that those other people working in the office with you, they may not have. But you've got to tune into that Holy Spirit strategy. Hey, he knows things to come, not just spiritual things to come, but natural things to come. Don't you think he knows when the stock market is going to crash and when it's going to boom? Don't you think the Holy Spirit knows when there's going to be a recession and when there's not? Man, you know, you think back to Joseph. He was storing up grains and all kinds of things way before the famine because the Holy Spirit knew the famine was coming, right? Holy Spirit will tell you natural things. You business people, man, you tune into that Holy Spirit strategy. See, but not what your mind thinks. Because sometimes we rely on the natural. Well, yeah, I'm a business person. I know what's going on. I know what's up. No, 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 no. Tune into that Holy Spirit. It may not make sense in the natural. It may be the exact opposite of everything you learned in business school. But the Holy Spirit is the best businessman out there. You know, just recently, I tapped into this. I was, I, you know, I do majority of the administration here at the ministry. And I was negotiating uh, our insurance. And I can't tell you the whole story is too long. But this person was just being a royal pain, okay? And I needed them to release some information so that we could have coverage in our insurance. And this person was just being a pain and was being angry and said, I'm not going to release it. And the, the ministry is not going to have insurance be, and it's going to have to shut down. And it's, and he said, it's because of you. I'm not releasing it. I'm refusing to do it, man. I mean, <laughs> my flesh, I was like, Oh, let me tell you what, you're going to release this right now. Come on, come through this phone. Okay, that is what my mind wanted to do. I had all kinds of things going on up here. But at the beginning of 2022, I vowed to live by the Holy Spirit strategy. So you know what I did on that phone? I just closed my eyes and I blocked out every thought, every natural thought that was coming at me. And I said, and just, I said, Holy Spirit strategy, Holy Spirit strategy. And you know what? The Lord gave me the perfect strategy. And he said, so this individual, um, our kids go to school together. Now, this didn't make a world of sense to me. I'm like, God, why are you going to make me say this? You're going to make me look dumb. But it was the Holy Spirit strategy, and I was going to follow it. Because if the Holy Spirit says go left, I'm going left. If he says go right, I'm going right. So this is what he said, so I'm going, right? So the Holy Spirit said, say this. And so I said to him, well, you know, I'm really sorry that you're not wanting to give me that information and this is causing a lot of tension. I sure hope when I see you in the halls of our kids' school that um, I can still smile and wave at you and you don't scowl at me. Why would the Lord have me say that? That's weird, right? That's weird. Do you know what? After I said that, he went instantly silent on the phone and he said, you know, you're right. I'm going to go ahead and release that information. I don't want this to cause, you know, contention and and discord between us. Hey, it's about the Holy Spirit strategy. All right. It works in your personal life, but you know what? It works corporately too. 
Ministers out there, pastors out there, start praying the Holy Spirit strategy for your church, for your ministry. You know, we've been praying and revive the Holy Spirit strategy for Rhema because he knows what's in the future. And I want us to all be strategically in place by the Holy Spirit to carry out what Rhema needs to carry out for these end times because it has been prophesied from this very place that Rhema will be significant in the end time harvest. So we've been praying out Holy Spirit strategy and man, have we been having marvelous times in prayer. Marvelous times in prayer. I wanna tell you, um, some of the things that have happened. Man, I mean, this kind of blew me away. I was really kind of shocked about this, but one day in Revive, um, so I had COVID back at the beginning of the, of the January, and we had to miss Revive because my mom was out of town, so I had to cancel it. Man, it made me so mad. So that next week, you know what we came in and we did? We prayed that COVID would cease to exist in this world, that it wasn't gonna stop us, that it wasn't gonna stop the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, that these restrictions would start falling off in all these other countries. We prayed for the world. We prayed for the world. And you know what? That was on Wednesday. I'm going to church. My husband and I are in the car Wednesday night. I don't listen to the news. All right. It's a bunch of nonsense. I don't need that news. The only news I need is this news right here because it's good. Right. And so I don't even listen to the news. It just gets on my nerves. So, but my husband does. And so he said, we're driving to church and he goes, Hey, did you know that, uh, just today they, um, they, they pulled back the COVID restrictions in the UK. They, they're doing away with the vaccine passport and mask. And I was like, excuse me? Because we literally had just prayed for around the world and we specifically prayed, one of the countries we prayed for was the UK. And I said, are you kidding me right now? And he goes, no. And I was like, no, I gotta read a news story. You're, you're, I, I thought he was like joking. Like I thought he had misread something. Sure enough, the very day, the very day we had prayed just hours before y'all, Talk about corporate prayer. And man, we were praying out that Holy Spirit strategy. Amen. Things change when we come together and pray corporately. The Holy Spirit shows up. Boldness shows up. So that just fueled my fire. And I was like, man, we are going deep and we are going to pray out those deep mysteries. I want to go deep and I want to pray out that Holy Spirit strategy. And so we started praying. I just want to read a few scriptures and, and, and tell you a few things. And then we're going to start praying and pray out some of those deep things. But let's go to Romans 8 first. Romans 8, 26. It says, and the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. For example, we don't know what God wants us to pray for, but the Holy Spirit prays for us with groanings that cannot be expressed in words. And the Father who knows all hearts knows what the Spirit is saying, for the Spirit pleads for us believers in harmony with God's own will. Now I'll tell you what, in praying out Holy Spirit strategy, it's real hard to pray in English. Because you know what? We don't know what God's will is concerning the future times in the world. So you got to pray in the Holy Ghost. And you got to get in tune with the Holy Ghost. Because you know what? The Holy Ghost on the inside of us, it's, He's always in perfect unity with the Father. And He prays out the perfect will of God. Right? And that is so important. Because sometimes, you know, what we think should happen, what we want to happen, you know, when it's concerning these end times and seasons in the world, it may not be what God has intended to happen. All right. And so you've got to pray in the spirit because when you pray in the Holy Ghost, you're praying out that perfect will of God and your natural mind doesn't get in the way. Right. So 
You got to pray in the spirit. First Corinthians 14 verse two, first Corinthians 14 verse two. And we're going to go in the King, uh, in the, what are we doing? Uh, new King James on that it says for he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God for no one understands him. However, in the spirit, he speaks mysteries. Amen. We got to pray out those mysteries. You know, when Brother Hagen was having us all pray for the Soviet Union and the Iron Curtain to come out, we were praying out mysteries. We didn't know how it was going to happen. You know, how these dictators and leadership, how it was going to happen. We were praying out mysteries. Praying out mysteries. And we got to get back to that. And then over in 1 Corinthians 14, we're going to start in verse 14, 14, 14 says, for if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. What is the conclusion then? I will pray with the spirit and I will also pray with the understanding. I will sing with the spirit and I also will sing with the understanding. Now this right here, 1 Corinthians 14, 15, this is exactly what has been happening in Revive. We're praying out in the spirit things. We're praying out in the understanding, getting songs in the spirit that are praying out. We'll get things, we'll get prophecies and words, and then there's a spiritual song that goes with it. We're going deeper. And you know, sometimes I got to be honest, it low key scares me. It does, how deep that we are going. Okay, because I'm not flaky and I'm not weird. And sometimes we get so deep. I'm like, oh God, I don't know if I want to go that deep. But you know what? I decided, I decided that I want those miracles. I want revival across the world. And if we got to go deep and if I have to be a little scared going deep because it's kind of unknown, that is what I am going to do. And I've got a group of students at Revive that are going with me because we are taking the message of faith and the power of the Holy Spirit to a lost and a dying and a hurting world. And we are bringing them to Jesus because y'all, this thing, it does have an end. Jesus is going to come back and everything in this world word is going to be fulfilled. And we have a part to play in that. It's bigger than just you. It's bigger than just me. It's a whole world thing. It's a Bible thing. It's a Jesus thing. This is what he predestined from the beginning of time to happen. And we are living in wonderful, marvelous, crazy, scary times. We get to be a part of it. We get to be a part of this end time revival. And we have to come together in unity and come together in corporate prayer and let the Holy Spirit show up and have his way and have his will and be infused with boldness to go out out into our world. That's what we've got to do. And it's going to take those that are willing, that are willing to go a little deeper. Go a little deeper. It may not be for everybody, but man, if you can hook up in unity and go a little deeper, the results that it will produce is amazing. And you know, we've been praying out for Rhema. We've been praying for Rhema. You know, because Rhema is worldwide. This is worldwide home, homecoming. And y'all from all the different parts of the world that were able to come home just thrills my heart. It thrills my heart. Y'all haven't been able to come home in a while. And I just love it, you know, that we have extended family all across the world. And it just moves me. It moves me to see those from all across the world here gathered together. Because what I know is that what we have been praying out for Rama and Revive, that we have been praying for you all across the world. So if you ever wonder if Rama cares, we do and we pray for you. We pray for you. And you know, I just believe that there is unity coming in the Rama circles. And that is what we have been praying about in Revive because see, y'all, this thing is a big thing. 
It's bigger than one man. It's bigger than you. It's bigger than me. We need everybody coming together in unity and harmony. We need the older generation. We need the middle generation. We need the younger generation. It takes all of us because y'all, God is a generational God. It can't just stop with the older generation. It has to be passed down from generation to generation to generation. And I am going to make sure that that happens. And we have been praying and I just want to read. I want to read some things. And this honestly makes me a little nervous because, you know, I don't really like flow in a lot of prophecy or like whatever you want to call it. I'm not big on calling it whatever, but anyways, I did have a prophecy. Okay. And, uh, and, and it was about Rama and, and, and it was in revive and, and it was very, man, uh, it, well, I just get overwhelmed even when I, when I think about it. It's, it's just, it was just so much. It was so much. And so I want to read this because you know what you guys need to hear. Those of you who, who are out there and, and are not here, you need to hear because I believe that this is pivotal because Rama is going places and doing things. And so just to give you some background, we were praying for Rama and, um, it just came up that we were praying for the young ones. Right. And so it came out, this part wasn't the prophecy, but just to give you some background, we were praying for Ramas all over the world and we got to this and, um, and, and I just said by the spirit, help the young ones to listen to the voice for they play a pivotal role in Rama. And so I, we kept praying for them, for the young generation, the younger generation that's going to come up a generation that hasn't even gotten to sit in the seats at Rama Bible training college yet, but they're coming. We were praying for them. And this is the prophecy that came out. It's a little long, so if you'll bear with me here. It says, for I have reserved a special anointing for them, meaning the younger generation that's yet to come. A special anointing. Only things that they can do. For I have implanted gifts and callings in them from the womb. Only they are called to do it. Many others will try, but only they are called to do it. Many will marvel and wonder, how can that be? But I have ordained it. For I control the times and the seasons, and I ordain who? I don't look at the outward man, but I look at the heart. I place giftings and callings as I see fit and as I will. I place them as I will to astound men. Those that say it cannot be so, it shall be so, because I have ordained it. I have ordained it in the very annals of the beginning of time. For the plan is far greater than any human could have imagined. That's why many marvel and wonder. The plan is greater than those who have gone before even thought. They could not comprehend it. I'm talking about Rama. For that, I ordained from the beginning of the time that started in one man. Oh yes, it started in one man. And I'm sorry if I get emotional, but this is prophecy. All this is the word of the Lord. Oh yes, it started in one man, but it shall flow through many. That purpose shall flow through many. That purpose that I placed in one man shall flow through so many, even through nations. That nations will be unified and have the same purpose that I have given to one man. Those nations shall rise up and affect other nations with the purpose. And it shall flow through nation after nation after nation. That many will marvel and wonder how that which started with one man has now gone through nation upon nation, upon people, upon people, upon tribe, upon tribe, upon generation, upon generation. Many will stand in awe and amazement because it will show the magnificent and the very omniscient nature of God. Through that, they will know that there is one God, that there is one King, the King of all Kings. For when my people humble themselves and pray, I shall heal their land. For I choose the humble to oppose the proud. Let it be a warning to stay humble, for I oppose the proud. For notice the plan, the purpose, the mandate that I placed in one man because he was of a humble nature. He did not get in pride. That's why I can move mightily. There were opportunities, but I knew, I knew that humble nature. For I am calling new people, 
for new seasons and new times, to take you to the place that you haven't been before. It may seem alarming, it may seem chaotic, but no, it is part of the divine plan that I have ordained. For see, I need fresh anointings and fresh giftings to take Rama to the places that I need it to go in the future. Some will leave, some won't recognize, some won't understand where Rama is going, but those, those who are supposed to go, those who are sensitive, those who I have called from the beginning, those who I have placed in their hearts the mandate, the plans and the purposes, they will go and they will follow. Don't be concerned about those that fall away, only be concerned about those that are going forward. Rely on them, trust them. They may be new, but trust them, for I have called them there for a purpose. I have ordained them there for that time. For the giftings and callings that I have placed on the inside of them, they will be the faithful ones, even more faithful than you can imagine. Don't be worried, don't be troubled, for I know the direction, I know the plans. There may be twists and turns that no one saw coming, but I know, and I have ordained from the beginning of time, I have made provision for that. And I'm calling a new army, a new people to support. Oh, but listen to this, y'all. Those old ones that are coming with you, they will be a mighty force in teaching the new ones. Because the mantle is passing and the old must give way to the new. I need the old army to teach the new army. For they have more strength. They have more anointing. They have the giftings for this season and for this time. Don't be troubled. Don't be troubled in mind. Don't be troubled in heart. Although some seasons may be difficult, I know the end. I will be with you, leading you and guiding you and know beforehand. I'm telling you beforehand, I have made provisions for those seasons and you won't see it in the moment. That's why I'm telling you ahead of time, I've made provision, so trust me. And you will see the mighty moving force of God like never before sweep across nation after nation after nation. And the very desires that I have placed in your heart will come to fruition if you will just trust. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 God's doing things in Ramah. Amen. As we were praying for Winter Bible Seminar, I felt in my heart that this was going to be a pivotal year. I kept getting that in prayer. Pivotal. Pivotal. And at Revive, we were praying out some things. And, and, it, and it goes right along, it goes right along with this Ephesians. I just want to read it again. Making every effort to keep yourselves united in the spirit, binding yourselves together with peace. For there is one body and one spirit, just as you have been called to one glorious hope for the future. There is one Lord, one faith, one baptism, and one God and Father who is over all and in all and living through all. However... He has given each one of us a special gift through the generosity of Christ. As we were praying out for Winter Bible Seminar, I just saw this so clearly like never before, and this is what I want to get across to you today. I just kept on getting unity but diversity. Unity but diversity. I saw in the spirit like never before. I saw the plan. I saw the plan. Oh, and it was so big and it was so great. And uh, this isn't a prophecy, but these were, as I was praying, as we were praying and revived, these are the words that came forth. And, 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 oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. This is the key right here. This is why that you had to be here. This is why you had to be here. Don't think it's a mistake. You are here for a purpose. You were here because you are pivotal in Rama. You are a pivotal in these end times in helping Rama accomplish the plan that God ordained. It is pivotal. You are pivotal. It is no mistake that you are here. So as we were praying for Winter Bible Seminar, these are the words that came forth. It says, those that are coming home will be unified. 
We're going to be unified in the spirit. There will be impartations, divine direction. There will be that unity. Unity as we come together as one like never before. That we will flow in one accord. For it is the same spirit. It is the same mandate. And that here I'm praying, Father, it is the same mandate that was given to Brother Hagen, that is given to Pastor, that is given to Mrs. Hagen, and Pastor Craig, and me. But it's manifest through different gifts that you have given us. Some may say that it's a different mandate, but it's not. Help them to see like never before that we are unified, but we are diversified because you have ordained that through each of us, through our personalities and our gifts, the mandate is one, but it's diversified because of the way it flows out of us. Unified, but diversified to reach specific people and generations so that we will step into those gifts to reach those that you have called us to reach. It will flow perfectly and seamlessly together in one accord. And where there's been hesitation, there will be boldness to flow. We can be unified, but diversified for it will take each of us operating in the gifts that God has ordained. For the unity and the diversity will reach all people, all tongues, all tribes of people. We're unified but diversified. And some will say, how can that be? But it's not for the natural mind to understand. For they all flow together as I have planned for them in perfect unity and perfect harmony. And the light that will break through, as I was praying this, I saw us here in this auditorium. And the light that will break through and the... It will spread like a lightning bolt through the auditorium, setting people free one after one after one. They will be free and they will run into their nation. They will run to their tribe. They will run to their people and they will be set free. And the power won't be containable. It will be combustible, like an explosion never felt before in the spirit. And that explosion will be so great that the shock waves will be felt, will be felt all around the world. And something will be different. Something will change. Something will be let loose in the nations across the world. It will be like an electric shock in the spiritual realm. It will propel us to that next level. And the unity, the unity all across the world, in the Rhema camp all across the world, the unity unity, but diversity, the power that will come from that unity, but the diversity of gifts will flow and the freedom that will come from that diversity. We will no longer be in a box. It can be the same spirit, but in a different way. And the freedom to flow in those gifts, flowing in signs and wonders and miracles like never before, because we are free to be diverse, but unified. Let me just tell you, I have so many people saying, hey, where's Rhema going? Where's Rhema gonna be in 10 years? Where's Rhema gonna be in 20 years? I know, I hear people talking about it, I'm not dumb. Let me tell you right from this stage, right from the horse's mouth where Rhema is gonna be in 10 years, in 20 years, and you can tell those other people that are asking that aren't here. Let me tell you where Rhema is going to be. Rhema is going to be doing the same thing that it has always been doing from the very beginning. We are taking the message of faith and the power of the Holy Spirit to a lost and a dying and a hurting world. We have done that from the very beginning and we are going to keep doing it generation after generation after generation. And in many, many years when I am in heaven, I'm going to be cheering from the grandstand saying, go, 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 keep on with the mandate, keep on with the mandate. Bring that message of faith and the power of the Holy Spirit to the lost and dying world. Rhema is going to be doing the same thing it has has always been doing forever and ever and ever until Jesus comes back. So next time somebody asks you, that's what you tell them. Hallelujah. 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 Let's pray. We're going to pray right now because we have got something to do. And let me tell you, you have something to do. You have gifts on the inside of you. Do you understand that when you walked across that stage and you picked up that diploma, you picked up that baton, that you, the mandate got infused in you and you committed and you vowed to carry the message of faith and the, the, the power of the Holy Spirit to your world, to your world. And do you understand that God 
from the very beginning of time, the very beginning of time, he looked right down through all of eternity and he saw you. He saw you picking up that mandate and he knew the gifts that he had placed in you. And no, he doesn't want you to be a carbon copy of Brother Hagen. And no, he doesn't want you to be a carbon copy of Pastor Hagen or anybody else. He wants you to be you because he placed gifts and callings in you that your world needs. Yes, Brother Hagen, he blazed that trail. Thank God for him. Man, he took that faith. He took that step of faith and he walked out of that bed. And he took the message of faith. And he grabbed a hold of that. And he taught us that. And he blazed that trail. And we needed him. But you know what, Pastor Hagen, Pastor Hagen, man, God needed a warrior. Pastor's a warrior. God needed a David. He needed somebody to get down and dirty and fight and didn't mind having a few scars along the way. God needed that. He saw that it's the same mandate in pastor. And I know, I know he can be a little rough and I know he can be a little rough sometimes, but he's got a lot of grit. And let me tell you, God needed that. Because I had a front row seat. I tell you what, if it had not been for pastor, none of us would be sitting here today. Because I had a front row seat. I personally watched him literally strap Rama on his back and carry it with fight and determination saying, I cannot be defeated and I will not quit and Rama's going to go. And let me tell you, we need a leader like that. And when you get in a faith battle and you've got one call to make, you better be calling pastor because he's a seasoned warrior. He knows how to fight the good fight of faith and he can help you to fight that good fight of faith. And Mrs. Hagen down there, I call it the spirit of stubborn. Man, she is so stubborn, but she gets stubborn and she reaches the very throne room of God. And man, when you're going to battle in prayer, you want her on your side because she will just bug the daylights out of God until he answers. Amen. And oh, Pastor Craig, the gifts in him, man, the compassion he has. Do you understand? He has the very heart of our Lord Jesus. That in the Gospels, Jesus was moved with compassion. And then he healed people. He performed miracles. Oh, Pastor Craig, the compassion that flows out of him. Man, he wants to bring hope and help and healing everywhere around the world. And the gifts in me, oh man. My heart burns for this generation, this young generation, for those 20-somethings, for those teenagers, for those children. Because what I know is if I can get the young people on fire for God, they will change a generation. So what about you? What are your gifts? What are your callings? When you picked up this mandate... God has something for you inside of you and you need to tap into that like never before. And if you've kind of been lax and kind of been not doing your part, you need to pick up those gifts and you need to remember that mandate because God is counting on you. God is counting on you to play your part. We all have a part across the world. We are a Rama family across the world. And God knew he looked through eternity and he said, it is bigger than one man. It is bigger than one family. It is going to take generation after generation after generation to fulfill this mandate. Will you pick up your gifting and your calling and mandate and help Rama? Help Rama fulfill it because it's big, y'all. It's so big. And so today I want us to pray. I want us to corporately pray. And the Holy Ghost is going to fall. And we're going to get boldness to use our gifts to take the message of faith and the power of the Holy Spirit to a lost and a dying and a hurting world. Oh Father, oh Father, we vow this day, we consecrate.
consecrate this day that we will pick back up that mandate and we will flow in our gifts and our callings. Father, we thank you that the gifts and the callings are without repentance. And Father, we just thank you right now in the name of Jesus. We commit this day. We vow this day to pick those things back up, to have a new desire, a new fervency, Father, that the mandate that you placed in one man so long ago, Father, we pick that up. We pick up that torch. And Father, we will flow in the gifts and the callings that you have called us, that you have called us. Father, strengthen us. Give us anointing by the power of the Holy Spirit to walk in all boldness, to speak boldly and bring that message boldly to our world. Father, to change our generation, to change our nation, to change our states, to change our cities, to change our countries, to change our neighborhoods, to change our schools, to change our governments. Father, hallelujah. Oh, and we will run. We will run. We will run. Oh, We will run to the lost and dying world. Oh, with that message, that message, that message, that message. Oh, so kota la shi si niki. Oh, so kota ini si kita. Oh, so ko. Oh, so ko. Oh, so ko. Oh, so kota la shi ni si kita. Oh, Father, and we vow right now. We vow to lift up our leaders. We vow to support Pastor and Mrs. Hagen like never before. We will pray for them. We will pray for them. We will lift them up, Father, as they are leading us. And Father, we will follow them, Father. We will come in line and follow underneath their guidance, underneath their direction. Oh, so cold. For you have placed them. You have placed them in authority, Father. Oh, and we just lift them up. Oh, Father, we know that there's so much more. There's so much more for Pastor and Mrs. Hagen to do. And we thank you, Father, that they will flow in those gifts. They will flow in those callings, Father. That they won't worry about all the other stuff, Father. Oh, so rashi inisiki asanaka. Oh, so kotalashi isinikita. Oh, so no kota inisikita. Oh, so kotalashi sinikita la. Oh, so no kota. Ha ha ha. Ha ha. Oh ho. So ko inikita la shi. Oh, so. Oh no. Ikita la sho. So. Oh, strength, strength, strength. Oh, to be able to run. Oh, to be able to run. Oh, so kota la shi ini asa oko o si ini akata la sho ini siki asa kata la shi. Oh, so no ko ini kita la sho. Oh, so kota ini siki. Oh, and faster and faster and faster. Oh, it's going to move faster and faster. Oh, so no kota inisi ki asakata. Oh, so no kota la shi inisi kita. Oh, so no kota. Oh, so no kota. Oh, so no kota asanakata la sho. So inikita. Oh, so no kota la shi. Oh, yes, run, run, run. Oh, so no kota la shini si kita. Oh, so no kota. Oh, so no kota. Ini si kita. Oh, so no kota la shi si ni kita. Oh, so no kota. Oh, and the pace, the pace, the pace will be so fast. Oh, so no kota. Ini si kita. Oh, so no kota la shi si ni kita. Oh, so no kota. Oh, that why it, that's why it takes many the pace, the pace, the pace will pick up. Oh, it'll be faster. Oh, it's gonna take many, 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 many more. Oh, so no kota rashini si kita. Oh, 
exponential growth, exponential growth, oh, exponential growth in Ramas around the world. Oh, sono kota, isiniki, oh, sono kota, la shisiniki, oh, sono kota, la shisiniki, oh, sono kota, oh, it's getting stronger, oh, it's getting stronger, oh, sono kota, la shi, oh, stronger. Asana kata, asana kata, asana 
Katala show so no kota inisi kita la show inisi nikita asana katana la shi inisi nikita o so no kota inisi akata o so no ukota asana kata asana kata oh and it may look different it may look different than you thought but it's my plan o so no kota la shi Asanaka inisukuta la shi sinikita o sono kota la shi inisinikita oh for my will will be done my will also oh, not man's but my will o sono kota la shi sinikita o sono no kota la shi sinikita o sono kota la for nothing shall stop what I put in place from the very beginning. O sono kota rashi sinikita. O sono kota isiniki asanaka. Oh, it's so much bigger. Oh, so much bigger. O sono ko inisikita asananaka tala sho sono kota inisiki asanaka. O sono kota rashi. Oh, and the unity around the world, the unity. Oh, so no ko isinikata. Oh, the power from that unity. Oh, so no no ko tarashi ini isi ini. Oh, so no ko ta. Oh, being in one accord. Oh, so no ko ta ini siki asana ka. Oh, fight for that unity. Fight for that unity. Oh, so no ko talashi si ini si ki talasho so isi ni ki talasho. Oh, so no ko ini si ki talasho so oh no ko talashi hasanaka. Oh, so no ko talashi ini isi. Asana kata la shi usuno ku usuno ku usini ki asana ka usuno ko ta la shi sini ki ta. Oh, and don't operate in the natural realm, but the spiritual realm. Isini ki ta la shi usuno ko ta la shi sini ki. Oh, for it's in that spiritual realm that the plans and the purposes and the pursuits. Oh, that I want you to do will be implanted and infused in your heart to take to your world. Oh, so no kota la shi sini kita. Oh, so no kota i sini kita la sho so no kota ini si kita asana kata la shu so no kota. Oh, it's oh sini kita. Oh, so no 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 kota la la shi. Oh, it's from that place that can only be touched by the spirit. Oh, in the spiritual, the spiritual realms. Oh, so no kota la shi. Ini si kita la sho so no kota. Ini si kita la sho so no ko. Isi ni kita la sho so no kota. Isi ni kita la sho. Oh, so no kota. Isi ni kita. Oh, so no kota. Isi ni kita. Hallelujah. Oh, so no kota. Ini si kita. Isu no kota la shi si ni kita. Oh, so no kota la shi. Oh, so from that spiritual place. Oh, so no kota. Oh, so no kota. Oh, so no kota la shi. Isi ni kita. Oh, so no kota la shi. Oh, from that place we will take our authority. Oh, from that place we will take our authority. Oh, so no kota la shi ini si kita la sho. Oh, so no ko isi ni kita. Isi ni kita. Oh, so no kota isi ni kita.
yet diversify. Together we are one, flowing with the Spirit. By faith we go. We step into the river like never before, and then the fire's gonna fall all over this world because we're unified. Yeah, diversify. Together we are one. Following the Spirit, being sensitive to His voice. If He says left, we go left. To the right, we will go. And it all started by stepping in, 'cause it's by faith we know. Not of the head, but of the heart. It's by the Spirit we will not part. But listen to His voice, and then you will start unify, yet diversify. Together we are one, flowing with the Spirit. By faith we go. We step into the river like never before, and the fire will fall all over this world, going deeper. We just recommit ourselves today. We recommit ourselves to take that mandate, to take the message of faith and the power of the Holy Spirit to the lost and dying and hurting world. Father, we remember. We remember those gifts and the callings that you placed in us. Father, that when we walked across that stage and got our diploma, that we made a commitment. We made a commitment to you to take that to the world. And Father, we vow this day to go deeper, to not let the natural things 
get in the way, to put aside the distractions. Father, we commit to make every effort to live in unity and harmony with our Rama family and with those around us. And Father, we commit to support each other like never before. Father, to be there for each other like family should, not judging, not critical, not judging because so-and-so doesn't do it like we do it. Oh, Father, but supporting each other and helping one another and bearing each other's burdens as a Rama family, Father, we commit to doing that to reaching out, to helping those that are hurting in our own camp. We commit to take care of each other just as much as we commit to take this mandate to the lost and dying world. And Father, we commit ourselves to pray for our leaders. We commit to carry Pastor and Mrs. Hagen in our heart and in our hands and help lift them up and make the burden easy on them so that they can flow in the gifts and the callings that you have called them. Father, we don't want to be a burden to them, but a help. So we commit to lifting them up. love you so much and we'll remember this day this is the day that we chose to go deeper this is the day that we chose to abandon it all and just go head in deep to bring about revival in these end times so that you can come back for a glorious church. We love you, Father. We thank you for showing up today. Thank you. We love you with all of our hearts. There's no better place to be than your presence. There's no place that we want to be except for right here in your presence. Thank you for loving us just as we are. Thank you for counting us faithful and calling us into the ministry. Such a great responsibility. But thank you. Thank you for counting us faithful. Father, thank you that you would give us all boldness and utterance in the Holy Ghost to speak those things that we need to speak, to say those things that we need to say, and pray out those things that we need to pray out. Thank you for it, Father. In your most holy name we pray. some impartations today. Some things that were done in the spiritual realm. Some people who got infused with strength. And I believe there's some people in here that thought that they were done. But God's not done with you. You're just beginning. You're just beginning.
times I was up in the middle of the night trembling going oh God oh God oh God you have to come through but he always does amen amen and thank you my revived people I love you guys all right well you can be seated for just a minute it's always so hard to transition it just gets a little awkward sorry (laughs) Uh, but we got to wrap this thing up so we can come back tonight. Amen. Amen. Well, it is offering time. Amen. Let me tell you, you know, the if, if you want an envelope, um, they're there. They should be in the seat backs in front of you. Um, and the offering buckets are going to pass by. If you're making out a check, you can make it out to KHM, Kenneth Hagen Ministries. If you want to give by text, you can text KHM and the amount to 28950. Um, if you're watching us online, you can text as well, or you can go to rhema.org slash give, and you can give that way as well. But I tell you what, man, you know, these offerings are going because Rama's doing the same thing it's always been doing. We're training up laborers to go into the harvest. Amen. And, you know, you can sow seeds. You know, many of you are alumni sitting out there. Hey, you know what it was like sitting in the classrooms. And we got to keep Rama going. And, man, when you give to Rama, it is good seed. It is good ground to sow your seed into. Amen. Because we are producing ministers just like yourselves to go and take the message of faith and the power of the Holy Spirit to a lost and dying world. And yeah, there's things we got to keep up around here, but we do that so that we can continue to train. Amen. Train for the end time harvest. So let's hold up our gift. All right. And don't forget tomorrow, uh, tomorrow night, yeah, today's Wednesday, tomorrow night is Rhema Day. And what does Rhema Day mean? You double up. So if you're going to bring a dollar, bring two, five, bring 10, 100, bring 200, a million. You just come on and bring 2 million. We'll take it. All right. All right. Let's hold up our gifts as we pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for Rama. We thank you what it is doing all across the world. And we thank you, Father, that as we give to Rama, that we are giving into good ground as we are training up laborers to go and bring the precious fruit of the earth, Father. And we just thank you that as we give our offerings, that you will give back to us, that you will meet every single one of our needs, Father, and that we will be blessed in the name of Jesus. Amen. Ushers, you may receive the offering. And I've got a river, living water, a fountain that never will run dry. It's an open heaven, glory, the sea, we will never be denied. Stir it up, pick 
Cause we're stirring up deep, deep wells We're stirring up deep, deep waters First of all, as you're leaving, please, please, please be extremely careful. Um, our maintenance crews have been working to put sand and salt on sidewalks and on the roadways, but as soon as they put it down, it gets covered up again with, you know, sleet and snow. So please walk very carefully. Hang on to somebody maybe that's stronger than you. Be careful with your cars, okay? Um, Remember uh, that if you signed up for the reunion luncheon, um, that is today, and there will be shuttles that are taking you and right out here in the south, okay, entrance. So I would recommend that you take a shuttle over there. Don't try to walk or even drive your own car. Um, our campus tours for RBTC have been canceled today because of the weather, but hey, you can still get information. Go to the RBTC booth um, in the north and the west lobby. Get information, all right? And don't forget there is lunch at the NRC today. The daily special is uh, a teriyaki chicken dinner. So you can always go over there and get food, all right? So listen to me. Come expecting tonight. I need you to be here. Do not let the devil win and let this nasty weather keep you away. Because Pastor Craig, I'm telling you, I know the message he's going to speak tonight. You need to hear this word. You will miss half your life if you do not come tonight, all right? And show up expecting, all right? Put on your snow boots, your warm clothes, and you be here, all right? We love you guys. Be safe out there. We'll see you tonight. <laughs>